Well, uh, good morning. Uh, later today, we're going to be passing a second COVID-19 bill to provide funding to hospitals. As you know, hospitals are a crit critical link in the care chain, and they need additional funding to prepare for more COVID cases. We're extending, in addition to that, we're extending our regular Easter Passover recess for an additional two weeks to do our part to flatten the curve. And as you're aware, uh, if we flatten the curve, that means that less people are infected at, at the same time, which means our hospitals and, and care facilities can handle uh, those that need serious care. Senators and staff will be available to work and meet with our constituents during this time, although we're gonna do it in a different manner. It'll be safer. The Capitol and Senate office buildings will generally be closed to the public uh, for meetings, uh, but you can still have meetings by appointment. I just wanna say this is uncharted territory. We're, we're working together, the House and Senate, Republicans and Democrats, to find our way through this, but it is uncharted territory. Uh, in light of what's happening with COVID-19 virus, it's wise to limit the access to the Capitol in the short term. We'll have plenty of time to conduct important business before our constitutional adjournment of May 18th, 2020. I wanna ensure my constituents that during this difficult period, my office will remain open and your questions and concerns will continue to be addressed. Uh, thankfully, technology makes me available to the public without putting anyone at risk. Our phones are still available, voicemails will be answered. Uh, you can send us emails, you can text me. Uh, I'll be on Facebook, I'll be on Twitter. And I think that's what you'll find from all of the legislators as well. And so, again, we're trying to work through this, uh, both the House and Senate, uh, the cooperation uh, is, in, fa in fact, should uh, give people comfort that we are all trying to work on what are the things that we still need to get done how do we work with the governor when he has a request for something related to COVID-19 uh, and make sure that we do it in a timely basis? Uh, we, we, the latest we would come back is April 14th, but both the speaker and I can call us back earlier if there's something that we need to do. And so with that, uh, the other three leaders are gonna comment as well. Well, good morning. I think it's important to recognize that the work of the legislature will continue. In some ways, this will be a more intensive period of work for us than a normal session. Uh, I think uh, all the other leaders would probably say the same, but we've been working 12, 14, 16 hour days uh, since the MBH guidelines um, got tighter. And the over the next few weeks, we will be working very closely together, the four of us. So it's our intention to bring the legislature back to pass legislation if we need to, when all four leaders agree and the governor needs uh, what, what it is that we are passing. He has some pretty extensive powers under his current executive authority after declaring the peacetime emergency. So we are mindful that um, he will be taking some actions and we will, we will as the legislative body, continue to carefully scrutinize those actions and listen to the public and get your input. But this is, as uh, Senator Gazelka said, totally uncharted territory for us. And this is a time that is unlike any that we have experienced except for maybe 9-11, and this one is so different in nature. Because each of us have the possibility to really change the risk profile for the state of Minnesota by our own personal actions. So one of the things you will see the legislature doing over the course of the day is strictly adhering to the MDH guidelines. You will not see people getting closer to each other than six feet apart. It is possible to continue our work and to do it safely at this distance. In the coming days and weeks, we will be working on three different kinds of legislation. Uh, we've, we've kind of identified three buckets we'll focus on. The first will be things that are related to COVID-19. The second are things that we consider to be mission critical for this session, the bonding bill is naturally in that category. And the third thing is those things that we can do by bipartisan agreement, where it might seem like a minor issue, it may be unrelated to COVID-19, but it's something that's important for the state of Minnesota, we can still get it done. And we'll have legislators focusing their efforts on these three buckets over the next few weeks. Um, but it would be wrong to think of this as a recess because we are definitely all still working. Um, it is a break in the calendar, but uh, part of that is dictated by the space limitations that we work in. So it is not possible for us to continue 
a full committee schedule or normal floor sessions and observe the MDH guidelines. You will see on the Minnesota House floor that we are only able to have half of our members on the floor at a time in observance of the guidelines. The committee rooms will be radically reconfigured for uh, committee hearings when those do occur. Um, and until we are advised otherwise by the Minnesota Department of Health, we will be strictly complying. Good morning and thank you all for being here. Um, I just want to echo what has been said. This is absolutely new territory. I am really grateful for the healthy conversations and discussions we have had as a, as a group to look forward to how we can do this very important balance of the work that we still have an obligation to do on behalf of the Minnesota people, but also to make sure that we are doing our part to uh, flatten the curve um, and to model that for others, to make sure that people know that this is serious and this is an opportunity to truly make a difference. Um, we've been saying, you know, the thing we've been talking about for weeks is wash your hands and don't touch your face. Um, I keep now saying take care of each other because I think it is so important that, um, that everybody realize, as uh, Speaker Hortman said, that we each have a role to play in, in, in arresting the spread of this disease. Um, so we are going to continue to work hard. Our caucus is committed to working hard over these next days. There will be a lot of work going on. There will still be a lot of communications with our constituents, whether it's by phone or email um, or FaceTime or whatever. I think we're going to see the Senate moving into the world of Zoom, which is uh, an important step for us. Um, but it, we, we, are in an, we have an opportunity now to take advantage of these uh, technological tools that exist that did not used to exist so that we can continue to do our work uh, and continue to honor our obligations to be transparent, um, but also to make sure that we're doing it in a way that is safe. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here. We're, we're uh, uh, obviously kind of all in this together. The four leaders met yesterday to talk about what actions we should take based on what everybody else is doing and, and what's being recommended by those that know the most about this. And um, we made a decision that uh, we would continue to work uh, through emails and telephone calls, but we'd limit the amount of time we spend with each other. So uh, we're doing exactly what everybody else is doing, and, and it sounds like uh, the management of this is is exactly what is uh, being expected. So um, this is what we need to do to make sure we keep each other safe and, and we're doing all the right things to keep the public safe. Uh, the Capitol itself is an interesting place in that people come here from every corner of the state. So I would imagine if there's a case of COVID-19 here, it'll be an uh, epidemiologist's nightmare to track down all of the people that that, that person came in touch with. So, um, you know, we just want to do our part to make sure that we're uh, observing the recommendations to keep a, a little distance from each other. And um, as much as we like each other, it might be nice to not be together quite so much, so. <laughs> Questions? How will voting happen if you're to maintain six feet, particularly on the House floor where it's tight? So, so today I think will be the one day that they're a little different. The, the Senate is still allowing committees through today uh, and voting, and so we haven't worked out what we would do when we come back. I know that uh, Speaker Hortman has a different plan in place already. So we have uh, legislators divided in a couple of different groups. Um, the members who are in the every other seats that it's safe for us to be in on the floor will vote from the floor. There will also be uh, five or six members in the alcove on either side, and there will be uh, members in the gallery. And so normally we vote by pushing our button, but um, we will have uh, voice votes or the physical presence of members doing a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We also have enough members that we can't fit them all in the alcove or the galleries. So we will have about eight members down in the caucus room uh, to the extent they come up to vote. They will come up, uh, the sergeant at arms will open the doors in the back of the chamber and they'll give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And we'll have to uh, figure out for the purposes of debate, if we have folks who are not in what we're referring to as the group A seats on the floor, we will have to swap people in and out. So an example would be, uh, if sitting next to uh, Representative Drazkowski, if uh, Representative Miller wants to come into debate, Representative Drazkowski will wipe down his desk with antibacterial wipes. He will leave the chamber. Uh, Representative Miller will come in and, and debate from his seat so that we continue to observe that distance. So no using the buttons? No, the people who are on the floor will use the buttons. They will. Okay. To the extent that you're going to have committee hearings, are the House state office building committee hearings set up for the kind of distance that you need, or will you have to use a room like this? Will you agree with the Senate to use their facility? 
The sergeant at arms and the uh, chief clerk worked all weekend. So we have uh, room 200 configured so that we could have a Ways and Means Committee hearing that would accommodate, that's our largest committee, 29 members and six staff and uh, it would allow for the presence of six members of the public and four members of the media. This would be similar to how we had to dial back uh, public and media access and, or do it in a different way during the 2015 special session in room 10. We had ticketed seating for members of the public. Uh, in the 2016 special session, we had 22 seats in the alcove that were ticketed. Um, and there, it, there have been other situations like when we come back and we do a special session, how we have kind of an abbreviated committee process. Um, those are all models that we've employed in the past that we're taking a look at using this time around. Can you address the hospital bill? How much are they asking for? How much are you going to give them? And as have you all agreed on this? I mean, is this a done deal, basically? And we're doing a terrible job of repeating your question, so I'll repeat the question. The question is, can you address the hospital bill? Is it clear how much they need, and is there an agreement? Uh, I would say Representative Liebling and Senator Benson have been working all weekend, in some cases around the clock, uh, with the Minnesota Department of Health and the governor's office. Uh, they're working very hard to get an agreement. It is my hope that we'll have an agreement uh, early in the day that we can pass uh, mid-afternoon to early evening. Do you have a dollar figure attached to, to that uh, number? And what about the concerns that have gotten a lot of play that hospitals really in Minnesota don't have the beds to handle a large influx of patients. So the question related to hospitals saying that they don't have enough beds, uh, we, we know that there's a real issue here. We haven't come up with a number yet for uh, what the House and Senate will agree to. I believe the hospitals were asking for $100 million, uh, but I am confident that uh, Representative Liebling and Senator Benson will Get, get to the number we need. Uh, it was spoken very positively that we'll get it done today, uh, but they don't have agreement yet. A mix of grants and loans or just loans? The question is, is it a mix of grants and loans or just loans? And at this point, they're still working through that. Senator Gazelka, can you clarify your position on the governor closing schools? I know Representative Doubt said he fully supports it. You did not use those words. Do you support the governor's position to close schools or not? Uh, the governor and I talked uh, that, I'm losing track of the days here, but uh, earlier than his decision to do that, uh, expressed concern that uh, as we make those decisions, we want to make sure that we're weighing out kids getting an education as well and not, not foregoing that. Um, and so they're moving towards uh, uh, distance learning, online learning, and in that regard, if there's a plan, uh, then I'm, I'm open to it. I am supportive of the governor uh, making the decisions he's making. Some of them he has more information than I have. That's why I said I'm, I'm not going to second guess the governor. Will this change in operations affect uh, employees that are um, considered kind of session only workers? What's the question? The, the question is will this affect uh, uh, staff that are employees only during the session? At this point, I don't think I can give you that answer. I don't think so. We're trying to you know, recognize the fact that everybody is in this together, but I don't know that I've even had that conversation yet. So over the weekend, we implemented a new telework policy for the Minnesota House of Representatives, and every um, individual who does not need to be in the building today is not in the building today. We have a very sharply reduced uh, number of staff around on a, on a need to be here only basis. We're working through making sure that everybody in every position where it's possible has the equipment that they need to telework, whether that's a legislative assistant uh, getting a laptop who hasn't previously been assigned a laptop. Uh, with regard to the session onlys, we don't know for the full session, but for this entire week, um, anybody who has an hourly type job where they can't perform it via telework is still on the Minnesota House of Representatives payroll. And um, we'll work through those issues this week. A as you know, things changed pretty radically um, from Thursday afternoon until now. And so part of what we need to do is work through some of those logistics. Okay. Uh, one other thing about, uh, so we, the, the Senate is, that I mentioned, we're doing a couple of committees today, uh, Judiciary and I believe uh, Senator Abler's uh, committee are trying to finish a couple things that may cause us to get some bills done yet today. So that's why we're a little bit different. We're, we're all moving on the fly here, but uh, the Senate has uh, configured 50 laptops for staffs to be able to work at home. You know, so we'll figure out how we're going to rotate that. We'll always have 
some staff here because we want to, you know, if, so, if there is somebody that comes in, we need to try to work uh, through that as well. But the doors of the Senate are locked. Uh, you cannot get in without uh, an appointment is how we're doing it at this point. And what about the Capitol? You mentioned earlier that the, the Capitol in the Senate building largely closed. I don't know that admin or the governor has said the Capitol's closed. Can you clarify that? Actually, I'm just uh, for, focused on the Senate building. Uh, I'm not sure what we're doing on the Capitol building. So. Sir Gazelka, how enthusiastically are you embracing these steps? The governor said yesterday that he might follow sooner rather than later the steps taken in states like Illinois and Ohio. I, we've heard some folks on your ideological team who are reluctant to embrace that because they're afraid of the economic damage it might do. What about you? So you're asking the question, how enthusiastically am I supporting the steps that the, the governor is, is taking or that we are taking? Uh, I think it's wise to follow the advice of uh, the Department of Health, uh, DHS and uh, CDC. Uh, we get together, the four of us and the governor, and we talk about what are the directions we should go. Uh, the steps that we're taking, I think, are necessary if we're going to bend the, the curve of, of uh, the infection rate, which is how we make sure that uh, some of the most at-risk people are going to get the care they need. That's the main reason when we think about making it more difficult to come to the Capitol. Uh, most of us are not worried about ourselves and, and us getting the virus. It's about what we might uh, get uh, put out to all corners of the state as a result of bringing people in here. And so that's what we're focused on. Yep. Question quick. Just back to your question about the Capitol being open or not, um, all four leaders felt very strongly that if we're going to conduct business here of the people, that the people need to have access to that business and be able to come and watch and, and testify. Um, and that is something that creates an additional problem based on the recommendations. So that's part of why we're changing the way we're doing business going forward. Um, but. We, we did not want to conduct any hearings uh, or have any sessions where the, where the public was locked out of the process, and, and all, all of us felt very strongly about that. So what should we tell the public about the Capitol? Real quickly, I want to um, come back to Kevin's question on um, how this is rolling out and the changes, and I want to refer to the, um, the way the announcement was made about the schools. Um, you know, I, I know in my community uh, after the announcement on Friday about the guidelines that there was a lot of questions and why aren't we closing the schools today? And I think this was a really important example of why we need to take a breath, listen to the medical professionals, the public health professionals, um, and the folks involved in whatever work it is we're dealing with and making sure that we're being responsible in creating a plan. I think that what the governor announced yesterday um, is it does does address all of the needs. It lets students be safe. It lets families be safe. It also makes sure that we are putting uh, steps in place to, to have a plan for the long term. What we know from other states when they have basically just instantly closed schools is they're left with a little bit of chaos. And so that is why I really appreciate the work done by the governor, by Commissioner Ricker, and by um, the educators around the state in, in terms of that. And I think that is a very important model for all of these questions as they're coming up. Because as we've said, this is uncharted territory. We are going to get new questions every day. We do. And sometimes we just need to stop and think and, and, and figure out how it's going to work. The Senate has session 11, so I'm going to ask one question from Brian Bax, who's online, and then we'll take one more from you guys. Brian wants to know, can you, uh, have you addressed whether or not tax filing deadlines should be shifted? So just to uh, give a, the House's final response to Mary's question about the Capitol being open today. So while we are, we are in session today, we have four media spots in the gallery, and we have five uh, spots for the public because we had the increased presence of members in the gallery. Um, and with regard to um, the question that Brian asked, remind me. Brian's question. The text. Oh, so uh, Representative Marquardt has been in touch. OK, the, to repeat the question, um, reporter uh, via text asked, uh, what's going on with taxes? And uh, Chair Marquardt and Commissioner Bowerly spoke over the weekend. I wouldn't be surprised if there's legislation. I wouldn't be surprised if that is one of the things that we're called in, in our on-call status that we're on, to pass a bill that would alter state tax filing deadlines to match whatever is happening at the federal level. But keep in mind, as this changes very rapidly, we need to completely understand what's happening in Washington, D.C., and then react here. So by going into the on-call status, we're not stopping work, but we're taking the time we need to fully understand all the facts as they're rapidly changing. So what's the takeaway uh, for today? I think that's basically one of the questions is we're putting the people of Minnesota first and their health 
uh, but we're also saying that we are available. We're going to continue to work. We have to continue to work. There's too many issues that uh, we need to get done somewhere before our, our deadline in the end, or there's a special session. Uh, but the other thing we certainly are balancing and looking at is, is the economy itself and the decisions we make. First, the health of Minnesotans, but then how do we make sure that our, our economy stays vibrant? And, and that is what we'll continue to have conversations with, with the business community. What is it that we can do to help uh, to make sure that you guys are successful and don't fail in this difficult period? Are you going to keep us updated? I mean, you're talking about a hundred million dollar bill that could get passed today to help hospitals. I mean, that, that's a big deal. Uh, are you going to update us? I mean, obviously things are being done very differently, which we all understand. Your press people are fabulous, but how are you going to keep us updated of, of very big bills that could get passed very quickly? So the question is, are we going to, are, is the media and, and the public going to stay updated on the big bills that we're working through? We'll continue to have conversations, absolutely. And uh, this one we told you beforehand, and we haven't even agreed yet, and I'm telling you it's going to be done. So we'll keep doing that. Thank you.